Yes, but we that's... welcome any question. Okay, Absolutely. I'll just I'll just bail out now and uh, enjoy. All right, thank yeah. you. All right, hello everyone. Thank you for joining us here today. We are so happy you're here and we are honored to be a part of this fabulous experience. Thank you again, Shauna. So before we begin, I would like to invite you all to ask yourself three questions. What new things can I learn today? How can learning be fun? And how can I apply what I learn into my everyday life? Okay, great. So you probably already know how important boosting your immune system is, especially these days. And you probably also already know that stress is so detrimental to your physical and mental well-being. And I'm also just guessing here, but you probably already know that your body heals when it rests. These are all true, are they not? So this is exactly what Carla and I are going to chat with you about today. We are here to let you know how your body naturally boosts the immune system when you relax. Of course, there's so many other things that you can do to keep your immune system humming along effectively, eating whole healthy foods, exercising daily, staying connected, and that's just to name a few. But today we're going to focus specifically on using relaxation to easily boost your immune system. So with all of that, who are we to even bring you this information? So my name is Danae Zilkowski, and I have been trained and certified in clinical hypnotherapy, as well as neuro-linguistic programming, which is in a nutshell the way that we think, and a few other modalities. Personally, I find the human mind absolutely fascinating, and learning about it is my passion. Now, I'm going to let Carla tell you about herself and what she does and how it ties into boosting the immune system. So, Carla? Thank you, Danea. Yes, we both work together, and it seems like the two modalities help each other to relax and heal the body even more of the person we work on. Because we don't do the healing ourselves. We help the body to heal itself. And energy medicine is designed to help to integrate and uncover and access the missing pieces of a health in a person's body and the missing pieces of how the body can heal itself. The why. It's very powerful and effective mind-body medicine that uses our intuition and the bodies, the one that we work on, the yes and no, that we can decide what needs to be done in its own priority. What is the first atom or item that we need to look at? What is the first thing that we need to work on? While Danae do the hypnotherapy session, finding out what's happening in the mind, I do the energy medicine and I see what needs to be done in the body. And each health is issue and each symptom has a history, a story, the why, what happened, how did it come about, and why is the myriad of causation layers behind the pain or the anxiety attacks or the food intolerance or, or the autoimmune conditions. For true, long and lasting healing, it is essential that the detailed story behind the symptoms is observed and resolved. So today we are especially going to work with the immune system because this last year has been very difficult for every person. And most people I talk to have severe stress or anxiety. They have lost their job. They have issues in their job or for other reasons, or they have to deal with relatives that have lost their job, the children going to school with issues. There are so many things happened this last year. We're all on a sort of a amygdala ride of emotions and stress and anxiety. So that is the energy work I do, I deal with. I also do a, a epigenetic. And epigenetic is working with the DNA and the RNA. And as you know, we all have the same human DNA. However, there are different markers on that DNA, what makes you 
look different than for me. So Sean has this beautiful blonde hair. I am obviously gray. Danea has curly hair, different markers. But those markers can be changed and added and removed depending on what is happening in the body. And as you know, stress is the number one cause of most illnesses. That's where it starts because stress creates blockages and stagnation in the body and it can manip it can take markers off or add markers on the DNA that are not to our best interest. So that is one area I work with. Another one is the microbiome in the body, the body ecology. And I think most people are aware of their microbiomes both in their intestine, in the heart, the lungs, the eyes, the mouth. It, those all have individual microbiomes. And depending on what uh, markers or uh, actually they're sort of like miniature microbes are in our system, that is how we digest food. And that will cause imbalances in our body because something is not correct in the microbiome of the specific body parts. And apparently we have 23,000 genes in our body and the average person has 50, 50 billion cells. Now, a lot of stuff can go wrong in 15 billion cells and 23,000 genes, as you can well imagine. So that's another thing I would work with and create balance where there is imbalance. So I don't know if that is a more of an explanation necessary here, but <laughs> um, how about if you just uh, go ahead, Danea, and just, just try and explain what you do. Excellent. Carla, I think that's a beautiful explanation because there's so much that you actually do. I mean, you've been working with energy medicine for over 25 years. You've taken well over 40 different courses. I mean, to try and compact that into a brief summary. Ten minutes. Yeah, right? Like you did absolutely beautifully. So uh, please, anyone that has any questions or comments, feel free to comment and, and we'll make sure that we, we respond as best we can. Yes. And now I'd like to briefly explain what hypnosis is. Okay, so so many people are afraid of hypnosis. They think they're going to lose control. They think they're going to reveal their deepest, darkest secrets, whatever, or they're going to cluck like a chicken, bark like a dog. And that, that's not, I mean, that happens on stage shows, right? Not losing control of your mind, but the barking and the clucking. And things like that only happen if you're okay with doing it, right? We have this amazing protection mechanism where we won't do anything unless we're okay with it. So hypnosis can be described in so many different ways. Basically, it is states of mind that we all go in and out of during our day. So have you ever driven home and not remembered the traffic, right? You just don't remember the drive home. Or have you ever been so involved in something that you lost all sense of time? Or what about when you daydream or you imagine something, right? All of those are different kinds of hypnotic states. Now there are studies out there that say that when we watch TV or a device, our brain waves are automatically lowered. And when that happens, we are more susceptible to suggestions. Now that might sound really scary, being susceptible to suggestions, but I'd like to suggest, huh, I'd like to present that every single time we make a choice, we are accepting a suggestion, right? Another a really common description of hypnosis is that it is a highly focused state of relaxation. So when we relax, our brain waves slow down. Just remember the last time you relaxed. If that's hard to remember, then think about when you're almost asleep and your body is so comfortable and it feels so good, you just don't wanna move a muscle, but yet you're still aware of your thoughts. That's a hypnotic state. So you see, we naturally move in and out of these different states all the time. When we get into those states of rest and relaxation, 
the energy that our body uses for maintaining its basic functions, right? And just with the information that Carla presented, there's a lot going on in there, right? Like what is it, 23 billion, 23,000 genes and 53 billion cells? There's a lot that needs to happen. You know, digesting, circulation, using our five senses, reproducing DNA, all of that stuff, right? So when we go into that state of rest and relaxation, all of that energy can now be redirected to repairing the body, right? So consider when you aren't feeling well, what do you want to do? You want to rest. That's what you naturally want to do. That is our body's way of saying, hey, this is what I need in order to, to feel better. Because when we relax, relax, our immune system gets fired up because it gets a boost of energy that is being sent elsewhere during the day. So that, in a really simple explanation, is how relaxation naturally boosts the immune system. So when the body is under stress, it stops doing what it normally does, and it just it goes into this mode where it just stops and waits. It waits to see if it needs to fight, it waits to see if it needs to flee, it just stops. It pulls all of the energy in and it just waits. So digestion stops, circulation slows down, everything stops because it needs to see what's gonna happen next. Because, well, it needs to keep us alive, right? Looking for threats. So that's what it does. So it's been so hard in this last year for our bodies to get out of that fight and flight space because there is so much going on on every level right every single human has been affected by everything that's been going on in the last year so relaxing can be become an even harder thing to do and then let's just throw in the fact that we live in a culture where being busy is rewarded and that makes it even harder to relax so when Carla and I use our modalities at the same time, like she mentioned, they naturally complement one another because when you relax, everything slows down, your immune system works better. And to have somebody working with the body's healing energy, working with that body's innate wisdom to heal, it deepens that session. And anybody that's had any sort of energy session knows that that's also very relaxing. So hypnosis, complements the energy work and the energy work complements hypnosis and it just works better helps the body heal faster it helps the immune system work better and it's just an all-around wonderful sensation really so that's kind of all i have to say about that i have a little technique that i'd like to share with you just a little mini relaxation i'd like to guide everyone through and i'm i think carla had one as well so i'll let her go first and then you guys can just rest and relax as I talk my way through it. Carla? Thank you, Renea. Yes, since we are focusing on a stress release and our anxiety levels this time, we all know when you are stressed out to the max and you have too many things to deal with, sometimes the amygdala goes into a hijack mode and it stays there. And you can't get out of it. It's also called PTSD. And once you're in that, syst in that PTSD mode, it is very difficult to get out of it again because you are cons constantly looking for the threats. What's happening next? Where am I going now? What is going to do this person going to do to me? Or what is the government going to do next, et cetera, et cetera? And it's very difficult for the body to even consider coping with it, let alone be relaxed, right? And so one of the things is that is also sometimes the reason why people gain weight and they can't lose it because there's just too much going on and the body can't cope with it all. So they cope with what is the first thing in, in their vision, which is the stress mode. Luckily, I have a very nice little exercise that will release your emotional stress and anxiety. And if I may, I can do an, uh, just a quick uh, example of that. So you put yourself somewhere with a straight spine 
And it helps if you have your eyes closed when you do it, because then you go more inside of the body and see where your stress is, where your anxiety is. It's mostly in your solar plexus and your stomach because that's our worry center, right? Especially around the navel. That's why people get stomach ulcers. Too much stress, too much anxiety. And you start with the head on your right shoulder. And as you sweep it all the way to the left, you breathe in. And when you sweep all the way back to the, the right, you breathe out. And you keep breathing into the left and breathing out to the right. Now, it's better if you do breathe through your mouth, your nose, because then you hit your ventricles and amygdala in your brain, and it will get the message easier and faster. So breathe in and breathe out. And swing your head all the way to the left and to the right. And while you do that, focus your eyes closed to a center in your body where you feel a stress, where you feel the anxiety. And as you do that, release it, release it, release it. And everyone I'm teaching this little exercise to will find it, it disappears, it disappears. It may take a few minutes the first time, it, at least more than 20 times back and forth and back and forth, but it releases any stress, any anxiety, any worry in anywhere in your body. So if anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to answer anything. Cool. Shauna says that feels great. And it really does. And I mean, anytime you take deep breaths is amazing, but to be able to direct it and, and move it through your body is just incredible. Thank you, Carla. It's called the emotional release. Emotional release. Yeah. Does it matter which way you breathe in and out? Yes. And Carla breathe will tell. Breathe to the left, breathe out to the right. Breathe into the left, breathe out to the right. That way you engage both hemisphere of the brain and all the organs in it. Into the left, out to the right. Yes. yes. Okay. That's good. Good. Yeah. And some people think the left is right and the right is left. But, you know, we all have those. This <laughs> one <we're using. laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, that's fantastic. I know I love that technique. That is such a it's beneficial. Release, isn't it? It's yeah. Fabulous. It really, really, really yeah. is. It can take something that's sitting up there about a nine down to, you know, a three or a four in hardly any time at all. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to lead everybody through a little mini relaxation. So as long as you are somewhere where you can settle in, please don't do this if you're driving. If you're driving, you shouldn't really be watching us anyway. But uh, so just everybody settle in, take a nice deep breath. And as you exhale, just repeat the word in your mind, relax. Deep breath in. And relax. One more time. Nice deep breath in. Relax. Just let that sensation of relaxation move through your body. And if it feels right for you, you can place your hand on your heart, but it's not necessary. And just begin repeating in your mind or out loud. I live with a happy heart. I live with a happy heart. Just repeat it and repeat it and allow your mind to present to you a moment where you did have a happy heart. Perhaps it's spending time with your children or your animals. Perhaps it's doing yoga being outside in the garden, whatever it is, allow yourself to live with a happy heart, to feel that happy heart. I live 
with a happy heart. And on the next breath, repeat to yourself, I live with a playful spirit. I live with a playful spirit. And allow your mind to present to you a moment when you had a playful spirit. Perhaps it's being outside in nature, laughing with some friends, a playful spirit. I live with a playful spirit. And allow the sensations of a playful spirit to move through your entire body. And on the next breath in, I live with a peaceful mind. I live with a peaceful mind. And just allow peace to move through you. I live with a peaceful mind. You can allow yourself to stay in this space as long as you need to with a happy heart, a playful spirit, and a peaceful mind. Letting those sensations move through every single part of your being. And remembering these feelings, knowing that every day in every way you are getting better and better. You can come back into the room and open your eyes whenever you're ready. Perfect. So those are two really quick and easy techniques that anybody can use anytime to, to slip into that wonderful space of relaxation, mm -hmm. knowing that when you do that, your immune system is boosting. So that's, that's what we have to share with you today. I think we're a little bit short on our time, but that's okay. Well, we can go a little bit into the, into the importance of meditation. Sure. It's now, I'm sure everyone is aware of meditation, how it has been proven to calm the mind, the spirit, and the body, right? And one thing on that is meditation and hypnosis are very, very, very similar. I often describe them as almost like siblings. There's siblings. very, very little difference between hypnosis and, and meditation. It's really just, just the words. And you can do the mantras that uh, Danae mm -hmm. just finished with, or whatever you like to focus on, but make sure you go in your body, mm -hmm. your heart. Your heart has a brain. I'm sure we're all aware of that now. You know, the love of another, for another person, that's your heart. And when you meditate, if you simply focus on your heart and ask if there is anything you can do to make your heart feel better, that will make your whole body feel better. Mm. Or if you like to meditate on universal energy, Simply go to the top of your head, that space that stays soft when you're a baby, and open your crown and ask for universal energy or photon energy to come into your body and you can direct it mentally to every part of your body. You can that also release your stress, your worry, your extreme worry sometimes. <laughs> we are all having issues in this world right now. Nobody can do what they like to do. And a lot of people have no work. The children have difficulty at school. We all have to muzzle ourselves up. Just the uncertainty. All that emotion, stress, and worry through that universal energy, just clean it out and clean it out and clean it out until you feel at least at, at peace if nothing, but calm and relaxed. Because when you're calm and collected and at peace, it's much easier to deal with the issues in your life rather than being stressed and reactive 
you may do or say things you later regret, which is not that good, is it? No. And the neat thing about doing that is to take just a few minutes in the morning really sets that flow for the day. And then to do it at the end of the day, it helps you release anything that you may have collected during the day, right? Because yeah, things yeah. change so quickly. You never know, you know, without everything external going on right now. I mean, how often does your day look different than, at the end of it than you thought it was going to look in the morning, right? So to take that few minutes and connect with yourself, bring yourself into that heart space, filling up with that beautiful beautiful energy, the sensations of peace and relaxation, just help that whole day move fluidly and beautifully. And, and then, it also helps you sleep better. Yep. So then to do it at night, you release everything from the day and you just sleep. And sleep is the most important thing that we can have. A good night's sleep makes the whole world look better. Oh, without a question of a doubt. Without a doubt. So is there any other questions or comments that we can answer for anybody? No, no. Okay. Well, I hope that you enjoyed our short little presentation here today. It was an honor to be here. It was a pleasure. And I hope that uh, we helped you learn something new. No, that was awesome. I loved your exercises. <laughs> Thank you, Shauna. Uh, All right. we, we treated ourselves to a sauna for Christmas this year, so oh, I think really? that'll be perfect to do those exercises oh. in the nighttime. Yes. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. how wonderful is that? I know. It's awesome. Yay. You guys yeah. are great. I love your energy. I love how you work together. You're just too cute. <laughs> you, it's just like you just see you guys talk together and stuff. It's just joy that you emulate and stuff like that, too. We fill each other in, don't we? You sure do. How long, how long have you guys known each other? Oh, my goodness. Uh, Six and a half years. 12, I believe, isn't it? I don't think it's been, me? me? Yeah? No, I don't think it's been that long. I think it's been about since 2014. Okay, well, that's, that's coming long, up yeah. to seven years. Wow, yeah. So we've known each other for seven years. Carla's actually been my practitioner for pretty much that whole time, and we worked together now for three, three and a half years. Yeah. Yeah. And I know you're, you're more powerful together, you have found. Oh, without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. yeah. It just brings in different elements and it, it truly works with the body, the mind and the soul because it addresses all of it. It addresses everything that we are made out of, right? Mm -hmm. And it's been so fascinating. We find that quite often, whatever the story is in the mind, is also what Carla's releasing, helping the body to release, right? Because Carla doesn't do it. She holds the space and the body does it. But quite often, you know, you can release something from the mind, but if you don't release it from the body or vice versa, it doesn't truly go away. It has to be released on every, on every level, right? Because the mind tells the body and the body tells the mind they're in constant communication. So if you're trying to change something or release something you've got to do it from the body and the mind in order for it to be a permanent positive change and the mind is your higher self mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's awesome your spirit self right yes yes <laughs> oh, Dawn, so practice relaxing and just start to observe the world as it is we are not in control of anything outside of us, right? Exactly. We're only control, in control of ourselves and our actions. Absolutely. So whatever happens out there happens, but it's easier to deal with it and work with it if you're calm, collected, and you have a plan. Mm -hmm. And if you're in, in, in a PTSD stage, you can't plan because you're in constant threat mode. And another thing too is, is what you, um, the energy that you are carrying is the energy that you put out and whatever you put out, it is universal law. It has to come, it has to be a match to come back. So if you're in a frazzled frantic state, which sometimes we all get in, you'll find yourself attracting more things to become frazzled and frantic about, 
Whereas if you're able to move into that space of calm and peace, you'll get more of that. That's why gratitude is such a powerful tool for, for creating a world that you are truly grateful for, right? Whatever you think about, you truly do bring about. So I think a lot of people think of PTSD that somebody was in the war and was shot at and had to kill people. And it was just devastating, which of course that is PTSD. It is. But PTSD yeah. is in lots of different situations, isn't it? Oh, yes. Absolutely. Yes. Because trauma is, is, is as individual as the person. It's, it's yes. simply put, it's, it's when the body and mind are presented with feelings they don't quite know what to do with. Right? What do you do with like this? An extreme car accident mm -hmm. can put a person into PTSD. Even I remember I was rear-ended once and I was just scared to death to get into that a car again to drive. It which uh -huh. is like, it's that is a form of PTSD, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, trauma is as individual as each person. Yeah. Because what traumatizes me might not traumatize you, but it doesn't exactly. make it any any less, right? So that has to get released. The trauma is stored, it affects the, the nervous system. So you can release the mind and that's absolutely so effective and you can release the body, which is also so effective, but until you get them both, it's always going to be a lingering little piece in there. There's a possibility that it can get triggered and come back. Yeah, that's, that's good to hear. Cause I think a lot of people that are suffering think and they, they think it's not a very big thing that happened to them, but they're suffering and there's shame around that by reaching out to them, right? So it's like, I love that everybody has a different experience and a different story that can impact yeah. them and cause them to have that, right? So, mm -hmm. absolutely. That's an imp important message for sure. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. That's awesome. Well, thank you guys. That was fantastic. Thank always love, always love chatting with you. Yeah, thank you. Great. Enjoy the rest yeah. of your weekend. Thanks, thank you too. Enjoy, enjoy the weekend, everyone. Bye.